Hey Math43, I wanted to take a look at um, counting problems with you. So what would a counting problem look like if you ran into it on your homework or on a quiz or on a test or just out in life? So I thought we would look at different games of chance. I want to explore what a standard deck of cards looks like. I want to explore what it looks like when you roll two dice. And I, I want to show you a few table games that you might run into if you ever find your way at a casino. Um, if you head to fabulous Las Vegas, there's plenty of casinos there. This is just an aerial view of the Strip. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a fun little town. I, I've been there quite a few times. So let's start in with our deck of cards. So in a standard deck of cards, you have 52 cards total. So if you were to actually count how many cards were in here, it should total out to 52. One way to split up a deck of cards is by color. So there are 26 black cards and 26 red cards. So it's an even 50-50 split if you want to split the deck up by color. Um, another option we have for splitting the deck up is by something called suits. And there are four suits. So you can see this symbol here, that we call a club. All right, this next symbol here, that's called a spade. This one you're probably a little bit more used to, a heart, and this one's called a diamond. So we have four suits. We have the spades, excuse me, the clubs, the spades, the hearts, and the diamonds. And then inside each suit, there are 13 cards. So each suit has an ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. There are times when we refer to the jack, queen, and king as face cards because they have faces on them. So if you hear that term, that's what they're referring to. Another way of looking at these cards is there are four of each type of card. So I mean that there are four aces. So you see an ace of spades, excuse me, I keep getting this backwards, an ace of clubs, an ace of spades, an ace of hearts, and an ace of diamonds. I really do know what these suits are. So each type of card, right? So I have four aces, four twos, four threes, four fours, all the way up to four kings. So this is what your standard deck of cards looks like. Uh, we can play blackjack with this game, you can, or with this deck. You can play poker with this deck. There are plenty of card games out there. Uh, and there are other decks of cards out there also. Like this standard deck of cards would not work for the game of Pinochle. That has a whole other type of deck of cards that it needs. All right, so there's our first look at our deck of cards. Let's go take a look at two dice. So if I break the two dice down, I want you to think about how many possible outcomes there are if you're gonna throw two dice. And we use that multiplication principle in examples one through four of chapter three, where you multiply the number of outcomes in the first part of your experiment times the number of outcomes in the second part of your experiment. So here you can imagine if you throw one dice, just the one, you have six possible outcomes. Because you can see here, I, I listed them by rows. You can roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six, right? But then you have a second die that you are throwing, and you can see by the columns, you can roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six. So when you think about six times six, that gets us to 36 total outcomes. And you can start to see them, right? We can roll a one and a one, a one and a two, one and a three, one, four, one, five, one, six. Great. All right, you could also roll a 2-1, two, 2-2, two, 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 three, two, four, two, five, two, six. And some of these start to feel similar, right? So if we look at this one, the black die rolled a 1, the white die rolled a 2. And that might seem pretty similar to this outcome where the black die rolled a 2 and the white die rolled a 1. Right? So we've got that. And the reason they're similar is because they both add up to 3. And especially most of us have dice that are the same color. Right? I have a bunch of red dice in my house. So it, it's hard to distinguish between was it a 1, 2, or a 2, 1. And a lot of times it doesn't even matter because you're just taking the sum of the dice. And that's why I put here many games rely on the sum of the two dice. So I want to take a look at this rolling two dice thing, but let's look at it through sums. Right. So if I look at this first outcome here, right, I have 1 and 1. So 1 plus 1 would be a 2. Right? And over here, if I rolled a 1 and a 2, I would get a 3. If I rolled a 1 and a 3, I would get a 4. Right? Or you can start to cross all of these. right? So you can see row of 1, column of 6 is a 7. Okay, And you can start to see diagonally 
how common it is to get certain sums, right? So it's pretty hard to get a two. The only way to roll a two is if both die show up as a one. That is the one of the hardest rolls to get. The other one that's equally as hard or equally as likely, or I should say unlikely in this case, is a 12. Because the only way to roll a 12 is to get a six and a six. So quite literally, this has a probability of one out of 36 of happening, right? There's a one in 36 chance that you would roll a two. There is also a one in 36 chance that you would roll a 12. And where am I getting the 36? Because that's how many outcomes we have, right? That's what we're dividing by. That's the number of outcomes in our sample space. And I, I highlighted these greens here, these sevens, because seven is the most common roll that you can get. So the most common sum is seven, and that's because every die can potentially roll to seven. So if you roll, rolled a one if, on your first die, if the second one came out a six, you get a seven, right? Or if I did a two and a five, I got a seven. Or a three and a four, I got a seven. Or a four and a three, a two and a, I think five and a two, six and a one, I gotta make sure I call them the same way. And you can see here that there are one, two, three, four, five, six ways to roll a seven. So that has a probability of six out of 36, or you could say it has a one sixth chance if you reduce that. And so I'm gonna show you the craps table in a little bit. And I want you to just remember that seven, it's, it's the most common roll, right? Two is pretty hard, three is pretty hard. And you can see that rolling a six, not too bad. Rolling an eight, not too bad. Fives, not too bad. Nines, too, not too bad. Tens, it starts to get a little bit more rare and fours are a little bit more rare, right? threes are even more rare, elevens are more rare, and then two and 12 are the hardest. So if we take a look at craps, right, this is your standard craps table. You've probably seen this in a movie where you had a lot of people standing around a table and people are yelling things and there's, and there's somebody rolling, uh, rolling their two dice. We usually call that person the shooter. So whoever's got the dice and is actually rolling them is called the shooter. Now, I'm not the best at this game. I don't know all of the rules. I don't have them memorized. Uh, I tend to actually lose money when I play craps because because I don't know the betting strategy. But the game is just so much fun because you're playing it collectively with people. So two dice are needed. There are two phases. So there's the come out phase and then the point phase. All right, so if you are in the coming out phase, we put money on the pass line, all right? So you see this pass line here. And basically, whoever the shooter is, we hope that during the coming out phase, they roll a seven. We would love, well, a seven or an 11, but we would love if they rolled a seven. And if you remember from the last slide, rolling a seven is pretty common, right? Rolling an 11, not as common, but if the, if the shooter rolls a seven or 11, anyone who bet on the pass line automatically wins. All right, and then we still stay in the coming out phase. So I've had it before where shooters just keep rolling seven after seven after seven, and I keep winning money after money after money. That is awesome, that does not always happen. All right, so if you're in the coming out phase, if the shooter rolls a two, three, or 12, everybody loses, all right? So that, that's called crapping out. Uh, now, if they roll anything other than that, and you see all these numbers up here, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. 10, if the, let's say, for example, they rolled a 10. Then once they roll a 10, the dealer will put a marker on the 10, and that is now their point, okay? So we would leave the coming out phase and move to the point phase. And then what we want to do is we want the shooter, now we don't want them to roll sevens, we don't want them to roll elevens, we want them to roll tens. So we want them to repeat whatever their point is, and in that phase, that's how we win. If you're in the point phase, and the dealer rolls a seven or 11, you're also crapping out, right? So there's all sorts of rules and side bets that I won't get into here. So you got, you can bet on big six, big eight. You can bet on, you're gonna roll a one and a two, a hard eight, a soft eight. There's all sorts of things you can bet on. I don't wanna go into that, but I just wanted to give you a preview of that game. Another game that does not rely on cards or dice at all is roulette. And this one's fun. Um, it doesn't require a whole lot. It is just a guessing game for the most part. There can be some strategy, but what happens is you place chips down on some of one of these or many of these options on this table. So I could place one chip squarely on the number one. I could place it squarely on the number two, 
I could put it on O or double O. You see those are greens, right? I could also just bet red or black, right? I can bet even or odd. I could bet I think we're going to roll a number between or spin a number between 25 to 36. So I could just put my chip here. I could put my chip here. So you can put your chip anywhere along this, this table. You can even, if you want, you can put a chip on the corner here. And then you would be playing one, two, four, and five. So you have so many options, it's ridiculous. But here's how you win in roulette. So let's just say, for example, I put my chip down squarely on the number four. Like it's just straight up on the number four, not touching anything else. All right, the dealer will spin the roulette wheel, right? So this will start spinning. I can't animate this. And it'll spin. And then he'll, he or she will drop a ball in there. So there'll be a ball that's spinning around. And as the wheel starts to slow down, the ball will also slow down and eventually it'll hit and fall into one of these slots. Now keep in mind, I hypothetically said that my, my chip was on the number four. If we're rolling through all of this, right, and the number four, as we're going, my ball slows down and it happens to drop into that number four slot, then I win. And I win 35 to one odds, which means if I had a $1 chip out there, the casino would give me $35 which is great, right? Everyone's loving when they win, but you can also see there are 38 options here because you have the 36 numbers plus the O and the double O, right? So I paid a dollar, I get $35 back if I win, but keep in mind there are 38 options out there. And another way of thinking of that is some people will be like, oh, I'll just put a chip on every option, right? So they'll put a chip on O, double O, one through 36. I want you to keep in mind, you just put $38 out there. And yes, you are guaranteed to win, but how much will the casino pay you back? $35. So it's set up for you to lose. Every game of chance is set up for you to lose. So, you know, sometimes it's just fun if you don't want to think about it too much. Just bet on a color, right? Bet on red, bet on black. If you're betting on black and any of the numbers that have a black background pop up, you win, right? If you're betting on red, any of the numbers with the red background pop up, you win. You don't win as nice of odds. You're not going to get paid 35 to 1, but you still get paid, okay? All right, so my favorite game, the one that I actually do play, is blackjack. All right, so the, the fastest way of saying how do you play blackjack is you are going to get a hand, your, your hand, you're the player. You want to beat the dealer's hand without going over 21. And you will hear all sorts of things like hit, stand, double down, and split. And most folks agree on what to do when. And I am happy to explain to you what you would do if you had, you can see a dealer four up here against a 19, a nine, a 10, and a 13. I would be happy to tell you who should stand, who should hit, who should split, who should double down. I could do all of that in here. I actually, and I don't mean this in a braggy way, I have this table memorized. So when I go play, I'm not sitting there pulling out my table being like, okay, I would like to hit. Okay, I would like to stand. I have it all memorized. I can explain to you my betting strategy. Um, and I, I, I don't do this at the tables. I do know how to card count, um, but I'm too scared to do it um, at the tables because I'm not fast enough yet. Um, I'm not an expert. If I was an expert, I would just be a professional gambler. So it's frowned upon to count cards in a casino. And I'm pretty sure I get caught because you could just see me mouthing off like plus one, minus one, plus two, minus, okay, the count's up here. So I, I, I just avoid doing that. But this is by far my favorite game. Um, I know the law of large numbers is against me. I know every casino game is set up for me to lose. So I am very strategic in how I play. I usually, like, if I get up in the morning and I'm in Vegas and I want a coffee and I'm like, okay, my coffee's going to cost me four bucks. I sit down at a table, play for a little bit. Once I make my four bucks, I walk away. Because again, the law of large numbers, I know if I stay there, the longer I stay there, the more likely I am to lose my money, right? If my friends want to go see a show, we're like, oh, we got to go see Brittany. Although I think she just retired. I find out how much her tickets are. And I'm like, okay, give me an hour, give me two hours and then come back. And hopefully I'll have my money. And most of the time I win, but sometimes I don't. I want to be super clear. There are some times when I just don't have it, and that's okay. I know that going in. It is a gamble, right? Um, you hear about people winning. They love to advertise about that. So for every one person that wins, they are not advertising the thousand people that lose. All right, casinos are a business. They are making money off of you, right? And if you go to Vegas, 
um, you get free alcohol with it and think they're still making money off of you whilst they're giving you alcohol because it's in their best interest to get you a little intoxicated so you forget to leave the table, you start making some bad choices, and they keep getting your money. All right, so that's just my rundown of, of how to count. All right, and again, if you ever want to learn more about, about blackjack, happy to explain it to you. I want to be clear, though, I'm not an expert in craps or roulette. I know how to play them, but I don't know the strategies. Um, but they are fun. I, I have stopped at the tables and played them, but I usually lose my money because I don't quite know what I'm doing. All right, thanks, guys. See you soon.